Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this month's online workshop series, How Environmental Chamber Testing Ensures IAQ Product Efficacy. My name is Troy Raska, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Communications here at Pure Air Control Services. And with me today is my esteemed guest, Dr. Rajiv Sahai, who is our Chief Scientific Officer at Pure Air Controls and also the Director of our Environmental Diagnostics Library. Welcome, Dr. Sahai. Welcome, all the participants, and thank you, Troy. Today's uh, webinar is very interesting, and I'm delighted to be here to join this meeting. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So today, uh, this is our agenda for the workshop, and we're going to take a look at you know, what exactly are environmental test chambers. So we'll take a quick look at the various types and, and what they're used for. We're going to deep dive into the test chamber we have at our facility here in Clearwater, Florida. We'll discuss why do we have a need for this type of testing uh, and how the current events of the day are sort of supporting that. Uh, the kind of products tested, the types and the test protocols, right? Uh, how we design these studies in our laboratory, uh, and then the results and reports that are generated uh, from these studies. Of course, as I said earlier, uh, feel free to type any questions you have in the questions tray. We'll be monitoring those and then answer them at the end of the presentation. So let's get started. So, hi, uh, obviously you worked very hard to develop the uh, environmental test chamber here at the Environmental Diagnostics Laboratory. So why don't you take us through sort of what environmental test chambers are? Like just give us a, an overall picture. As, as you can see in this photograph, uh, it's actually a bit of inception, right? We have a small acrylic test chamber being utilized inside of our larger room simulation uh, test chamber. So why don't you explain a little bit about what these test chambers are? Yes, very good. This is an excellent uh, beginning try that uh, first we let our viewer know that why even we worried about the environmental test chamber. The simple answer to that is that in the real world scenario, there are a lot of uh, things which we are uh, continuously exposed to or some kind of interaction is continuously happening. So if someone comes that uh, he has developed a technology or he has developed a technology which kind of intervene and try to do good for whatever obvious allergen or any other thing of the environmental born or airborne in nature, somebody has to understand their efficacy. So the basic view or point is that like how you mimic sort of a real world situation in a laboratory manner. So what could be the best option? So keeping in that view, we have developed an environmental chamber which is very versatile and we can sort of stimulate or simulate the condition which we fix or we face in the real world and then how we are going to test them. So like Troy was saying that the simulation of situation can be as a small as a tabletop kind of unit, which is like kind of a control environment. You see here the acrylic made uh, three or four like you know surfaces here inside like and then you can do carry some kind of experiment maybe the experiment based on the microbes maybe based on the chemical maybe based on as simple as environmental parameter that if we are trying to study some changes in the behavior of temperature humidity etc that can be set in that Contrary to that, if our goal is to study that while we are in our living room or offices or that kind of a space, that how we ensure that the sample is being collected from that particular scenario. So how we are going to do that? So again, a good simulation is going to be creating exactly like, you know, office or you know, home environment or a room environment so that you can understand the, the, the behavior of that 
challenge which you are facing. So having said that, we have developed different type of environmental chamber to mimic the condition which we want to test. As I said, your simulation of real world condition can be very well taken under these kind of artificially built environmental chamber. That's why the chamber is nothing but it's a closed space and we put environment because we can control the environment or we can you know, simulate the environment if we want humidity, temperature, whatever at the certain level, we can do that. So that's why the other word is being used, control laboratory setting, that what you are getting outside, you have to study that, you, you, you sort of visualize that what you're going to face and based on that, you kind of control in a manner that it is under your control so that you can see the effect of various different kind of challenges which you face on day to day basis. For an example, somebody is having some novel idea and they want to deal with like, you know, that idea and want to develop some kind of product. I don't know, maybe for an example or sake of argument, just say that one day uh, some scientists sitting somewhere in the world think that, okay, if we control the bacterial population in the operational room suite or like, you know, in a hospital, then the life is going to be much easier because then you have less nosocomial disease. So, he developed some kind of product. He come up with, for an example, like, you know, a product which has like, you know, best and UV light, right? So somebody has to figure it out that, yes, if two, two basically answer, whether the UV light works on bacteria or not, number one. Number two, if it works, at what extent? Or how much bacteria can be lethal or killed, right? So then you conduct research and the research is going to be based on these kind of you know direct exposure of that UV light instrument with that of the bacterial population. That is one type of research I'm just explaining you that can be proven in this type of test chamber, and that we gladly assist our you know user to set that kind of experiment. Now, likewise, there are various kind of product people are developing, and this is what a better time than this because in the COVID there is a lot of you know situation and they are coming the different kind of product so we can also like you know to test those products to say whether it work or not. Now exclusively our environmental test chamber here located at Clearwater in Florida that have a main laboratory and a bigger what we call the full chamber and that full chamber dimension is given right here that is four foot by 10 foot by eight foot. And the interior test chamber, which is made out of the two part, one is the interior test chamber and the exterior use area. So actual chamber where we set up the experiment is 10 by 10 by eight. And there is a controlling station, which we call exterior use area, which is about 10, 27, 15. That is the adjacent area of the test chamber. And then, we have a dedicated ventilation system for this whole area, which we are talking about. And then we have various kind of sensors and various kind of control put in there in the environmental test chamber. For an example, controlling the pressure, we have a pressure gauge from where we can control and monitor that whether it is a positively pressurized or negative pressurized. Should we need to negatively pressurize, then obviously we do the ventilation system in use and we take out some of the air in a way that the chamber is going to be slightly negatively pressurized or negatively pressurized as per the project requirement. Likewise, if you want to do like, you know, positively pressurized, then you throw some more air and then you kind of make an equilibrium. So it is going to be a little bit positively pressurized. And then there are multi observational point in this because this is, this, this test chamber is having like as many as three uh, windows with a glass see-through and from where you can see what activity is happening. So that is in nutshell, uh, you can see here the photograph that this is the see-through uh, window. This is the chamber, this is the interior space. And then this side, you have the experimental station from here, which you cannot see through this thing. And these are some, you know, 
duct system which is being in place right now one experiment is going on so this experiment requirement of duct is there so we build the duct so it is very versatile system and then you can have all kind of you know uh, sensor here for monitoring the pressure monitoring the humidity monitoring the temperature at the same time you can set up the room with slightly positively charged or pressurized or slightly negatively pressurized that kind of adjustment can be made from the external working station where you can also have facility to collect various air sampling uh, device like we typically use impactor as well as impringer so there are two different technology can be used for collecting the air sample does that make sense to it, it makes perfect sense, Doc, and I think in a few slides we're going to get into uh, how we design these studies uh, based on what it is we're trying to test or experiment with, and uh, certainly you'll go into more detail uh, at that time. But of course, you know, it, it really starts to ask the question, you know, why are we going to use a big chamber like this? Uh, to conduct this type of testing. And as we've seen, uh, as you said earlier, uh, Dr. Sahai, the pandemic has really brought to light uh, all of these different new products and technologies. And, and our CEO here at, at Pure Air Controls, Alan Wozniak, he, he likes to uh, use the analogy that it's the wild west of indoor air quality products or a gold rush of indoor air quality products that's created this perfect storm uh, where you have federal funding being released uh, to schools and to city, county, state government agencies. And now the market is flooded with all of these solutions that claim to be uh, the solution. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, a lot of the efficacy testing performed for these products are done offshore or are not done uh, in a simulation of real world conditions, but more uh, in, in a, a laboratory uh, or experimental mode where they try to extrapolate larger numbers uh, out of that data set. So, you know, when we look at why you want to conduct this kind of chamber testing, uh, it's, you know, to test products against, uh, you know, these truth and advertising claims that are coming up. Oh, this product is 99.999% effective against SARS-CoV-2 in a one cubic foot acrylic box. Is that true in the real world when the ventilation is changing and, and when there's different scenarios like the amount of uh, people in a room versus not? So, you know, you can test against that. You can look uh, at these unintended consequences that are coming out of some of these products where uh, they might be doing good, as Dr. Sahai said, earlier in the presentation, but then there might be unintended consequences that these products are actually contributing to other factors that are not good for the indoor environment. And of course, legal action is now being taken against some of these products. So you want to conduct, conduct this type of testing to get verification on these products before uh, you release them into the marketplace, or you would want to check up on them if you're a purchaser or a facility uh, executive uh, before you get these type of products. You want to make sure rigorous testing was done. And that's where we talk about product efficacy verification, proof of concept. Does it work? Uh, is, is it going to impact the health and safety of the building and its occupants in a positive or negative way? Uh, you know, another uh, reason that you would want to do this is to support academic research. Uh, that might be surrounding some of these types of products or technologies that are new and being developed. So, you know, as a matter of fact, a lot of this has been in the news lately. And, and here's just a recent sampling with, within maybe the last month, month and a half. And now you're seeing that schools are uh, recalling uh, some of these technologies that have been installed en masse in their campuses. Right, they've spent millions of dollars to improve air quality, but some experts say that it could be making it worse. Right, the Department of Education for the United States of America is going to investigate air cleaning devices used in schools. So you want to make sure if you're moving forward with some of these new technologies that they have undergone this type of testing uh, and are certified uh, as being able to work as designed. 
especially by a lab that's certified to do this kind of testing like ED Lab is. So Dr. Sahai, you know, what kind of products have you seen come through without naming names, uh, of course, but what kind of products have you seen coming through our environmental test chamber in the last few years? And as a matter of fact, uh, why don't you let our attendees know how long we've had this test chamber in place and been using it? Well, this chamber is over five years is in place. That is uh, when we have established this chamber, realizing the market need of doing the product efficacy testing. Mostly we have, especially in the past six months, we have flooded with like, you know, various kind of air cleaning device. And for last year, we had also been privileged to support some of our HVAC companies they have come up with the various technology and we have tested their efficacy while you are using those HVAC unit and lately also that is being uh, growing. The other type of work is the filtration, various kind of filter product come through and we have to evaluate their efficacy. Well, um, the other whole gamut or whole other component of this whole efficacy testing issue is the product which is uh, claim that it is effective against various kind of airborne allergens, some kind of you know product which can prevent like you know asthma, etc. So we have also some product like that. We have also tested some cleaning equipment. When I use the word cleaning equipment, meaning the antimicrobial efficacy equipment that uh, can clean the airborne bacteria and stuff by using various kind of technology. So that product we have also tested and especially in past two years, those products are flooded. Everybody wants the result just like a yesterday kind of you know schedule, which oftentimes is not possible because unless and until we have done all nine yards, we are not going to say whether it is touched down or no. So as long as even a few inches back from the touchdown line, it is not considered touchdown. So we also do our work in a manner to help our uh, users in a manner that when they go and use those products in the real world scenario, then they are not going to see any difference that what we have tested in the laboratory. Various kind of building material also come through to test whether this is prone to the mold or microbial or microbial infestation as a whole or not. We have tested quite a few of those products. We have also tested, you will be surprised, like various kind of textile and clothing product that people has come up with that is an antimicrobial. So we are also capable of doing that. Beside that, we have several other tests, which is uh, industry need, health and hygiene associated uh, product, which can be used in various kind of, you know, occupational and non-occupational settings. So we are also have the opportunity to test those products. So these are the wide spectrum of those products. For your information, there is one um, like, you know, product which is claimed to be the efficient against cleaning the air as a whole, including the microbials, as well as various kinds of particulates. So this is one of the projects uh, we have taken, accepted. And as you can see in this device, there is a color changes if it is a Clean air, you can see blue line like that, but if it is a faulty air or air is not up to the quality, then you can see various kind of color code, red, violet, magenta, et cetera. Very good. So, so these are the few products. Yeah, I would imagine then that the types of assays that, that we design uh, and the types of tests that we conduct, the protocols to conduct them, uh, are going to be sort of dependent on the type of product uh, that you're testing. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And um, like we have put this slide to let our viewers know that what happened when we have various kinds of test and test product, what we test against, because that is the first thing we discuss with our user that what is it used for or why you are come up with this project and like i was explaining you that what type of project we have test but uh, these are the this these kind of test we render and we develop protocol for testing for an example 
somebody come with the antibacterial product, then we are going to test against various kinds of bacteria. Likewise, mold or fungi, somebody just having a filtration device, like, you know, trying to figure it out that how efficient or a smart filter is that, then we can use the particulate testing. We can also use for the volatile organic compound, like, you know, if it produces volatile organic compound or not, so we can test that. We can also test various kind of environmental parameter that what is the impact of light, rain, like in humidity, temperature, uh, moisture, etc. on certain product, we can test that. And of course, uh, we have a sensor to continuously monitor the temperature and relative humidity in the test chamber. Besides, like, you know, as I said to you that we can also uh, provide the ideal situation uh, required by the project need or project goal, whether it can be done under the negative pressurization scenario or positively pressurization, then we can set up that. And of course, we run every single time the sterility test, what we call a trial control that can validate the testing which we do provide. So these are the type and test of the product which we are rendering at this point. Well, thank you, Dr. Sahai. And, and you know, we do, we have a question uh from uh mariam Razabi. uh and i'm going to go ahead and take this question now because it's relative to this slide and she asks uh do you conduct chamber tests with aerosolized uh oh, sars cov2 so maybe explain how that's done uh in in other laboratories or what method to test uh against sars cov2 uh, well, we do provide the aerosolized uh, SARS-CoV-2, but not the live virus plank count because our test is handled with the positive control of SARS-CoV-2, meaning that we aerosolize the gene or the RNA fragment of that SARS-CoV-2 inside the smaller chamber, which I was showing you earlier, the acrylic chamber. And then that's how we figure it out, whether your product is efficient against the uh, uh, the RNA or the genetic material or molecular material of this virus or not, that how we do the air testing. Side by side, we have like, you know, the the various glass carrier, we put like, you know, these um, RNA or the molecular, um, like, you know, molecular based technology. We can test that uh, efficacy of a product against those carrier where it is coated with the SARS-CoV-2 gene and we see that whether it is being destroyed or denatured de de and we can use the PCR or RTQ-PCR technology to test both pre and post uh, sample collected from uh, either airborne scenario or the surface power scenario and that's how we conduct uh, the SARS-CoV test. But we do not use or manipulate any live viruses at this point uh, in the ED lab test chamber. Well, thank you, Dr. Sahai. And I, as a follow-up, I know there are some uh, similar tests that are a surrogate or, or similar to SARS-CoV-2. Uh, I think they're called like bacteriophage. Can you maybe explain a little bit about that? Yes, there is another uh, whole set of tests is done with the um, surrogate, what they call it, using the bacteriophage, various bacteria, et cetera. We have the opportunity to test some of these uh, surrogate, like in the, the virus surrogate in terms of like, you know, bacteriology. For an example, one organism come in my head that is a Staphylococcus aureus. So you aerosolize the Staphylococcus aureus and you study the efficacy if it is efficient on that uh, bacteria, then it is being believed that it is also going to be efficient against the viruses as well, because both are like kind of in similar in nature. Viruses are a little bit more simplified than the bacteria. So if something is working on bacteria, then it is believed that it is also going to work on the virus. But uh, that's, I was telling you, that's a surrogacy, not going to be exact like, you know, the SARS-CoV-2 live virus kind of thing that we do not provide. Excellent. Thank you. So now that we know the types uh, of tests and the protocols that we're using, uh, uh, you know, to test against these challenges that these devices uh, or building materials or textiles might face, 
uh, how do we design uh, you know the study so if if a customer came to you dr. Sahai and said well I have product X and I, I, I want to see how well it works what would the the design of that look like you know in a very simplified term yeah so the very first thing we sit together on the drawing board and start doing the scope of work like you said what is your intent what you are testing your product against and suppose you come up with okay i have like you know designed this product which is going to be antimicrobial then very first thing we are going to say like when you use the word antimicrobial you need like you know you mean like bacteria viruses fungi whatever so you explain it and afterwards suppose you say like well i mean like you know it is going to be lethal effect on bacteria and mold so then you next phase the, you develop the scope of work by selecting or mutually agreed upon organism and then afterward we have to be developing like how many set of sample we need to collect in order to develop a meaningful data so typically like you know if your sample is collected in the duplicate for the three, three set then going to add you meaningful data so then we are going to estimate total number of sample what we need to do what kind of subsidiary monitoring you require, whether you need the humidity and temperature that is important parameter for you or not. If it is parameter is important, then you are going to also measure like, you know, relative humidity and temperature. Sometimes people have like, you know, whether their instrument is producing ozone or not, you can also inbuilt that. So a whole comprehensive scope of work is finalized. Once it is finalized, then obviously the financial part come where you can sign the contract with the company that how long it is going to take how much money it is going to cost. those are the administrative like you know job that is going to be built in the scope of work once you have finalized that then in the scientific part of it that we are going to clean and prepare the environmental test chamber for you know running the test as per the mutually agreed upon protocol once the protocol is finalized, then the SN experiment is set based on that protocol. So every single time you do exactly in the same manner what you have explained in your protocol. Then the scope of work, what we have mutually agreed upon, then is going to be skewed. like you are going to conduct the test as per your scope of work. And then as a result of that, you are going to make certain observation. And of course, the observation is going to record in terms of data. So data is being collected. And then finally, those data are analyzed in order to develop or in order to give you the result. And it is reported to you. So result is going to compile in form of like you know report that's what you will be getting as the end product that whether your product is efficient or uh, it is not efficient or if it is efficient where it stands so that sort of information you will be getting with the laboratory report no that that's excellent and and our reports are, are very detailed uh that it would include the full scope of work as you outlined but it would also include an executive summary. Is that correct, uh, Dr. Sahay? Yes. So that uh, other people in the company don't have to be microbiologists to understand uh, what the results uh, of the tests were. Is that correct? Exactly. So we summarize that whatever is the finding is in a semi-technical manner so that a person who is on the board or a developer or whosoever who has no relation or correlation directly with the microbiology they can also understand that what we have done and on that scale this particular product is efficient or not that what we can do and of course all of our report and results are supplemented uh, by the photographs and various video log as well as all the collected data is being interpreted in terms of the statistical like you know mode and that is also been written on the like a written on the report uh, developed by the computer so we can explain anytime and every time you or should you need the explanation and of course the the recommendation can be generated based on the observed data one very good thing we do we put also the glossary of terms so that if there is some technical term and you are not exactly sure that how it is going to apply in this kind of scenario or this case then case to case basis we have developed like you know a glossary which is going to have certain fixed terminology which you will be automatically getting in any report 
but there is a versatility that if you are exclusively looking for a product testing in a product uh, in a particular scenario then we are going to explain that terminology for your understanding or so that one can understand easy in terms of understanding or evaluating the report or result yes thank you now you know one thing that we didn't actually put on this slide uh, but I think is important to note is that now we, we do have a secure portal that uh, our customers can access their reports through as well as you would be able to send the report to them directly and then be able to consult with them uh, and answer questions. Yeah, this laboratory has like, you know, I'm sorry, this laboratory has a very strict policy on the laboratory confidentiality. So client laboratory privilege is being maintained and it is uh, the data is being not shared with any third party unless and until you sign a disclosure and all of our uh, reports not only for this particular assay but any or every report generated by the ed lab is being distributed through a secured portal so that one thing uh, you brought try that's a good thing because it's a client communication and we take the client communication very seriously and we are very proud that we respect more than any other laboratory can possibly these kind of scenario because we never share the report unless and until you have signed a disclosure yeah that that's true and as you can all imagine obviously especially with product development research and development uh in the scope of work we often times in fact most of the time agreed to that non-disclosure uh, agreement uh, and, and to keep this confidential uh, so of course we treat that with the utmost respect uh, you know as we think about this and we're developing products uh, a lot of uh, you out there might be thinking well I already uh, got a lot of this product if I, I've installed it in my campus buildings and now what it's coming under fire in the media or my school board is questioning me uh what can be done after these products have already been installed and so you know part of the answer is of course to go back and look at uh the original purchase order or, or research put into the products to verify that, uh, that those products went under this kind of testing protocol uh, the other thing that I want to mention here, uh, while not directly related to our testing, is that our building sciences division at Pure Air Control uh, Services, along with the support of the lab, can actually provide field testing for products and technology already in use to verify the claimed efficacy. And so we can come on site and provide uh, all kinds of field tests, including but not limited to doing particle counts, uh, looking at the microbial or bio burden efficacy uh, in the spaces that these products are being used. Of course, ozone production uh, is a very big topic right now. Uh, do these needle point bipolar ionization devices actually put out the amount of ions? That they're advertising so we can take ion counts and read uh, we can so certainly look at specific volatile organic compounds or even the total you know, C counts and then of course any kind of inhalation uh, CO2 buildup issues so we can look at all of this inside of the building envelope and test product efficacy as well so uh, just keep that in mind so uh, Dr. Sahai, we have we have another question here, uh, and this is from Eric Johansson, and I feel like this is a good point to answer this question. He says, good afternoon, Jim. How do you assure that the testing labs listed on a product sheet are a good quality lab? In other words, is there a list of certified laboratories that we as consumers or facility managers can trust? And I feel like if you can tell us a little bit about environmental diagnostics laboratory, some of that uh, question probably will be answered. Yeah, I guess you were breaking up, but I get the gist of the question. The question being like, you know, how one can assure that like in the lab, what they are hiring is capable 
and doing the authentic work. I guess that was the gist of the question. Answer is very simple. All day long, I can tell that I'm the superior laboratory. I'm the superior laboratory. It's not going to make a lot of sense, is it? But at the same time, we are being evaluated with the external like auditors, and we are evaluated on the parameter of ISO IEC 17025-2017, that is a standard. So if you comply those standards, which basically based on various uh, parameter, and one of the very best parameter out of it, in my opinion, that the instrument which you are using, human resource you are using, the total HR package you are using beside uh, your testing is being evaluated. It is being like up to the standard, what it recommended by the ISYAC. So that gives you an extra assurance that the third party has done some uh, evaluation in order to guess the release the accreditation certificate. So what I mean to say that this laboratory is also accredited with the A2LA, which is a very big accreditation body, third party evaluator. In America, they kind of evaluate likewise laboratories. So we are on their roster. We are um, accredited by them. This laboratory is also qualified and certified by the New York Department of Health under ELAP program. And then this laboratory is also enjoyed the accreditation by the CDC in terms of certification. It's called as elite certification that we are proficient doing the Legionella testing. So that is the another thing. Other one important parameter I want to tell you is that this is perhaps one of the fewer laboratory or one of the first group of laboratory get accredited for conducting environment SARS cov 2 testing utilizing the RT-QPCR. So our RT-QPCR test for the surface or the air for SARS cov 2 which is the causal organism for COVID is provided to us through the uh, A2LA. So we do test the environmental sample for the estimation of or for the testing of SARS cov 2 under the accreditation list of you know or accredited method and should anybody need uh, more information than the scope of the laboratory work or the scope of the ed lab uh, through the a2la which is in the public domain but if you need it we can more than have or we are more than happy to supply that uh, list of like you know the scopes which we are accredited for right and so basically the lab isn't just the testing chamber it's a full environmental diagnostic laboratory that supports our building sciences team when they go out and do investigations within buildings and it also supports other industrial hygienist firms and other environmental firms that would send their samples to you to evaluate is that correct Yes, that is the the because we are claim ourselves and we are certified accredited for the environmental diagnostics laboratory. So we entertain any and every type of environmental sample. We do not uh, entertain any clinical sample. So we can test from virus to mycoplasma to mold, bacteria, various kind of allergen, various kind of environmental parameter, various kind of toxins such as endotoxin, mycotoxin. We can also like, you know, assist our customer to testing various kind of chemical and like, you know, various kind of uh, uh, like uh, the, what do you call the pharmacy best like testing, like should you have a pharmacy clean space testing, that what we do, we can also test or support the evaluator who can go for the certification for the clean room certification so we can provide testing for them as well right so clean room testing for compounding laboratories and pharmaceutical companies as well so very high level uh testing that you're accredited for so you know that that's excellent and then of course we wanted to take a moment uh, to tell the folks today that might not be that familiar with pure air controls a little bit about us and so uh Pure Air Controls was founded in 1984, and we have these three specialized divisions, of which ED Lab is one, but of course our Building Sciences team division is another, and then our Building Remediation Sciences team uh, is the third division. So we focus on the health, comfort, and energy efficiency of buildings. 
and that's what we do as an environmental services contractor. So all told, we've had 800 million square feet of experience in over 15,000 buildings. And so we do commercial work, healthcare, education, government agencies. Uh, of course, all of these other divisions are certified in their respective fields and have affiliations with their trade organizations. And uh, we are also a certified minority business enterprise. Uh, so we participate in working with other groups uh, to help support and train other minority businesses. I think it's also important to note, uh, not listed here, but we have a number of cooperative purchasing contracts available uh, to our customers to do everything from uh, building remediation projects, AC restoration, uh, right up to uh, this coronavirus testing on the surfaces and in the air and even environmental chamber testing. So uh, Dr. Sahai, uh, Pure Air Control Services was founded in 1984. When was the laboratory established in Pure Air Control Services? The laboratory's uh, official day of establishment was uh, July the 2nd, 1994. So 10 years after our founding, uh, we found the need to actually develop this laboratory to support the kind of prescriptive approach that we take to indoor air quality and indoor environmental quality. So, uh, and, and that includes, you, know, you wouldn't go to your doctor and he would send you right to surgery. He would do testing and, and evaluating of what's going on in your body and then determine a course of action. And that's what this laboratory was founded to help provide our customers is that scientific-based data through studies uh, to be able to look at your environment and see what corrections need to be made uh, for its optimization to have acceptable uh, air quality in it. So uh, we do thank you so much for attending today. And uh, we do have a little bit of time left for questions and answers. We uh, thank you for your excellent questions so far. And uh, let's see if we have any more questions. We do have another question from Eric Johansson. And he says, so, he says, so I'm not sure. You might have to clarify in the chat, Eric. He says, so your folks finished our air sampling last week. Uh, uh, all those samples are done in your lab? Uh, so, are you, Eric, is this a specific reference to uh, an environmental chamber test, or is this in reference to uh, some field testing that maybe our building sciences team came out and collected sample? I'm not, I'm not sure. If, if, if we did air sampling for you, then likely, yes, the chain of custody was filled out, uh, which determines exactly where in your building. Uh, the sample was collected at what date and time and who collected it. Then that sample with that chain of custody is sent back to our laboratory, who then logs it in and then starts the analysis of those air samples. Uh, and then based on the outcome and what type of uh, analysis we're doing, uh, whether it's uh, culture, non-culture, uh, any kind of PCR testing, uh, then that could take some time, and then, of course, the results will be uh, analyzed, interpreted, and then put into a report. So uh, if it was just last week, unless it was a rush order, I'm sure they're hard at work on it right now, uh, investigating uh, what is in those samples. Is that a fair assessment to a big question, Dr. Sack? Yes, we have a very specific turnaround time and we try to practice the turnaround time with our ultimate best and um, various sample has various kind of turnaround time. If you have sent some considerable turnaround uh, samples, the turnaround time is 7 to 15 days. If you have sent non-considerable analysis such as aerosol, uh, your uh, surface tape prep, etc., then the turnaround time is about 5 to 6, 7 business days. If you have done some uh, metal and chemical kind of testing that our turnaround time is three weeks. So it depends though we have uh, some expedited turnaround time, but those are not applicable 
for certain assay, including the culturable assay, that what we do not offer a faster turnaround time. The best turnaround time is SARS-CoV-2 testing, which our turnaround time is between 24 to 48 hours, which I thought is very good uh, without any expedition fee on that. Excellent, thank you. So as, as I look in the question tray, I don't see any more questions for today. And it looks like we're gonna get everybody out right on time. Sometimes we do tend to go over. So uh, once again, my name is Troy Raska, I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Communications here at Pure Air Control Services. And I'd like to thank Dr. Sahai for taking the time today and uh, explaining what exactly environmental test uh, chambers are and you know how they impact our industry. IAQ products. So, Dr. Sahai, thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to tell our guests before we can? Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, it's an excellent presentation. Twice, it's been very good. I think that people have some interest in that. They can always ask us the question. We can always uh, send their answer. Our Turnaround time for any query is between 24 to 72 hours. So, if you send something to the ED lab you will be getting a response back within 72 hours. So please do write to us if you need some uh, additional information on that. And um, you can directly communicate with me. My email and phone contact is given there. So do you need Troy import? Troy's phone number and the email is given there. So there are a various ways you can communicate with us, email, phone, whatever suits you. We are available on even WhatsApp, uh, like, you know, messaging, uh, through the Facebook. We have also a Facebook page as well. We are also on LinkedIn. So all social media, Twitter, however way you want to communicate with us, we are standby to entertain. Well, thank you very again, much, Dr. Sahai. And thank you all for attending today. Uh, 